What's going on guys? Stefan, s &E's Garage. Uh, we're in the middle of basically rebuilding this Jeep. We just did a water pump. We just did a starter. Um, we just did a couple other little things to it. And uh, now we're getting to the, uh, the wheel hubs. The wheel bearings in this thing are shot. You can hear them when you spin it. They're roaring away. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take care of them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these wheels off. They are 19 millimeter lug nuts. We're going to use our impact gun to do that. So let's get the wheels off and take it from So up next, we're going to get this caliper off. It should be two 13 millimeter bolts. There's going to be one here and one here. They're either 13 millimeter or half inch. I completely, totally, and utterly forget. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, so we're going to get these off. If I was wrong on the size, I will let you know. Um, and then we're going to knock this rotor off. So I'll be right back with you. Our caliper off safely out of the way uh, they were 12 millimeters not 13s keep that in mind 12 millimeter take the uh, caliper off uh, we're gonna pull this brake rotor off now and be right back with you brake rotor is now off we are going to take our pair of pliers I use dykes I find them to be the easiest and we're gonna unbend this cotter pin pull it out and then pull this castle nut off and behind it is going to be a 36 millimeter axle nut we need to get that off so let's get going. So I guess you can say I'm a little unprepared for this job because I don't have a new cotter pin. So I got this thing out as straight as I could. Um, I just use my dykes and I, if you see my little bite marks, I just kind of pry it out. So that's out. I sprayed this down with some PB blaster like so. Let it sit for a minute or two. And we're gonna pull this 36 millimeter axle nut off. Um, when you pull this castle nut off, there's gonna be this little metal uh like spring clip if you will it, it helps keep pressure on the uh on the the bolt or the nut whatever you want to call it um so just make sure you don't lose that keep it in a safe spot because it is kind of important it keeps this axle nut from backing off which would not be a good time um so we're going to get our impact gun we're going to zip that 36 millimeter bolt right off nut sorry nut, not a bolt it's a nut we got our axle nut off you want to be mindful of this washer back here you can kind of push the axle in a little bit and then you just get your fingers in there, pull it out, use your fingernails, whatever you got to do. So here's that. Don't misplace that. It is also important. And now we know that this axle, the splines are not seized because I was able to push that in. Um, so now we have to work on getting these three bolts out here. There's one, two, and three. The third one's on this side. Now they are 12 point sockets. They're either a 13 millimeter or a half inch. You should be able to use either. Um, as long as your bolts are not screwed. So I'm going to spray the back of these with some PB Blaster. Again, let them sit for a little bit. I'm going to get my socket out and start working on these. So what I'm basically doing here is going ahead and breaking all three of these bolts loose with my half inch breaker bar so that I can then get in with my quarter inch breaker bar, um, which is a lot smaller to finish the job. Um, so I might have to turn this wheel a little bit more to our right to get to that one. So let me do that. They're kind of in tight quarters here, so you just kind of have to make it work, but you don't want to strip them either. Let me try turning it the other way. Here we go. That'll, that, that'll do it. So we're going to get this on here. You want to get it as far onto the bolt as you can, and you'll you'll feel it pop when it breaks loose. So that one's now loose. We got one more to break loose here. After we get this socket off, it's fit a little tight because these are, in fact, pretty rusty. It might help if I spray the back of these with a little bit of blaster too. There we go. All right, same thing. Pull up on it, break it loose. All right, so now that we got them all broken loose, 
we can move over to our smaller tool set and get them out. I'm not going to bore you, so let me get these out. We'll be back with you. All right, guys, we got all three of our bolts out. So we're going to spray where this meets the steering knuckle with some PV blaster really good because the next part is going to be kind of violent. We more or less have to beat this thing with a hammer until it comes out. So let me get my BFH and uh, we're going to pound this thing right out. Here we go. Alright guys, so we finally got this thing off. Let it sit for about 20 minutes with PB Blaster in it. And it took another good 5 minutes of beating the hell out of it to get it to come out. But it came out. So now is going to be a good opportunity to pull this axle shaft out a little bit. And inspect your U-joints. These are good. This one's good. I should say there's no play in it. So we're just going to go ahead and slide this axle back in. Leave it alone. And I'm going to clean this bore out. I'm going to get some brake clean, clean it real good. This is where the uh, the new hub is going to bolt to. So we're just going to clean this real good. Put some anti-seize or, or you know some sort of a lubricant or penetrant where the new hub is going to sit. So that next time we need to do this, if there is a next time, it doesn't fight us like this one did. Because uh, whew, that sucked. So let me get the new one out. Let me clean this up we'll be back with you to put it back together. So I'm using some ceramic brake parts lubricant because it's all that I have laying around. I don't really like anti-seize because it makes a mess. Um, I end up looking like the Tin Man after I use it. So I'm just going to lube this whole bore here up real nice. And this stuff actually works for this pretty good. I've used it before um, on other Jeeps. Now here's my new hub. Now, what I purchased for this vehicle were two Timken um, bearings. Uh, they make quality bearings. They last for a while. And I haven't had any issues with them. If you go with some cheap made in China, you know, crappy bearings, you're going to be doing this job again and sooner than later. Um, and not that it's a hard job. It's just why, why do that? You know, purchase a quality bearing. Go Timken. Uh, SKF is good. Um... I don't really like CarQuest. They're rebadged, you know, other products, but um, Timken or SKF are both very good. So now that we have this lubed up, we're basically going to slide this into place. Okay. And we're going to re bolt. We're going to put our three bolts in the back of this, those th the 12 point half inch bolts. And from there, we're going to do our axle nut. We'll be back with you. All right, guys, we got our three bolts in. So now we're going to put our washer in here. We're going to take our 36 millimeter bolt, shiny side in, and we're going to start that by hand, always by hand. All right. We're going to run this in until it's tight. You don't need to kill it, but you want, you know, you want it to be, I think the, the torque spec is like 200 foot pounds. So I'm going to just, that's it, no more, no less. Now we're going to put our spring in and our castle nut, followed by our cotter pin. Which like I told you, I am reusing. So it might fight with me a little bit. Probably have to use the back of my dikes to tap it the rest of the way in. Alright, I can see it now, so we're almost there. Alright, now I can kind of use my dikes to pull it the rest of the way. 
okay, and I'm gonna bend this like that, and I'm gonna bend this like this. All right, that's good. We're gonna put our rotor on. And we're gonna put our caliper on, tighten our two 12 millimeter bolts for that. We're gonna put the wheels on. So uh, we're basically done at this point. There's really no reason for you to watch me anymore. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if this helped. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're working on, what kind of XJ you have. Um, this should, this guide should work on uh, any vehicle with a Dana 30 front end, you know, front axle. So uh, this isn't just for a Cherokee Sport. Pretty sure the Grand Cherokees used the Dana 30 and uh, a couple of the Wranglers did too. So hopefully this helps you. Thank you for watching.